The latest generation of GPUs kicked off earlier this year, and while there have been some exciting products, at least relative to the previous generation, there have also been some true abominations. Depending on how you feel about AMD and Nvidia still pushing 8GB of VRAM on the masses in the year 2025. Actually, let's start there because this is VRAM unboxed after all, and we've made it our mission over the past three years to end 8GB discrete GPUs, and I think we are finally starting to win that war. But before I start getting into AMD and Nvidia, a quick disclaimer. Now, we realize not everyone can afford high-end products or even wants to invest the kind of money it takes to get a high-end product, even if they have it. So when we say, for example, the RTX 5050 is the biggest heap of garbage NVIDIA has produced this year, we're not mocking or shaming those who were unfortunate enough to have to buy it. Your options at that end of the market are extremely limited which is ultimately the problem that we've been trying to address. So to be clear, we're not attacking you, the consumer. We're telling AMD and Nvidia that they can shove these products and their fat margins. They suck and we want to see them do better next time around. Of course, how much they care right now isn't really up for debate because, well, they don't care. They're making mad money selling GPUs to AI data centers and therefore mostly view gamers as annoying peasants but they'll come crawling back at some point, they always do. And it's then that things will have to change. No 8GB next-gen GPUs. And speaking of which, let's check out the GPUs that should have never existed in 2025. Oh, but just quickly before we even get to that. Today's video is brought to you by Insta360 and their Link to 4K webcam, now available in white. Building on the original link, the Link 2 includes AI tracking for individuals and groups, auto framing, and auto gesture controls. For a webcam, it has fantastic autofocus with no focus pulsing, which is a major plus. It also now offers modes such as customizable backgrounds, adding versatility to every use case. The Link 2 is equipped with a gimbal, making it perfect for presentations, meetings, group calls, and any situation where you might be moving around. The 4K 30fps sensor offers excellent performance even in low light situations, and you can really only get better performance out of something like a digital SLR camera. With various AI features and a user-friendly desktop app, achieving the perfect presentation is a breeze. It also pairs perfectly with the new Wave speaker phone, so for more information, please click the links in the video description. Okay, so I'll be giving the 50-50 a bit of a hard time, but the truth is, probably the worst product in the current generation lineup is the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti, or more specifically, the 8GB version, which unfortunately does share the exact same name as the 16GB model. Now, obviously, releasing two very different versions under the same name is problematic, especially given one of the versions featured a VRAM capacity that is quickly becoming inadequate. Worst of all, NVIDIA knew this to be the case. It's not like the whole 8GB VRAM disaster caught them by surprise. They knew exactly what they were doing. In fact, they were so aware that they actively worked to mitigate the damage to them, not gamers. They did this by simply trying to hide all 8GB models of the GeForce 50 series. So not just the 8GB version of the 5060 Ti, but also the 5060 and 5050. NVIDIA PR employees told us directly in a private meeting that they were not trying to hide the 8GB models and that samples would be made available to reviewers. Not by NVIDIA, mind you, but rather their board partners. They told us that we were free to go and immediately contact board partners and request 8GB samples of the 5060Ti, but NVIDIA themselves were exclusively sampling reviewers with the 16GB model. So the second our meeting with NVIDIA was over, we reached out to several board partners who we have a long-standing relationship with, and all of them told us the same thing. They were under strict orders from NVIDIA not to sample any media 8GB versions of the 5060 Ti under any circumstances. In fact, some partners told us that NVIDIA was so worried about reviewers covering the 8GB version that retail samples were delayed by a week. That means when the RTX 5060 Ti was first on sale, the vast majority of cards were to be the 16GB models, 
and that meant reviewers who wanted to cover the 8GB version had to wait an additional week before they could even buy it. Thankfully though, through some great contacts that we have, we were able to scoop up one on release day, allowing us to promptly show you just how broken an 8GB GPU with the compute power of an RTX 5060 Ti was in 2025. It was really bad, made worse by the fact that Nvidia had also disabled half the PCI Express lanes, limiting the 5060 series to just 8 lanes. A disastrous decision for those using PCI Express 3.0 systems. Nvidia knew full well that pushing out an 8GB GPU with 4,608 CUDA cores at a cost of $380 US was doing gamers dirty, but they did it anyway. Had the 8GB version just been called the 5060, and not the 5060 Ti like the 16GB model, it would have been a lot less egregious. But as it was at $380 US, the 8GB model was a trap, and those of you who were informed made sure you spent the extra $50 on the 16GB version. The really good news out of all of this though, being that gamers have woken up to the whole 8GB VRAM nonsense, as sales data from several major online retailers has shown GPUs with 8 and 16 gigabyte variants to have sold in the range of 15 to 30 times better for the 16 gigabyte version. And we even said it right from the start, Nvidia should have never released an 8 gigabyte version of the RTX 5060 Ti, and we were right. Of course, we were coming at this from the angle of the consumer, but had Nvidia actually listened, they would have avoided damaging their brand for no real gain, as gamers have clearly seen through the BS, and like us, they've told Nvidia to shove it. Voting with their wallets, so good work gamers. Now, having watched all the drama unfold with the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti series, not just the fact that Nvidia decided to release a graphics card for almost $400 US in 2025 with just 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but they chose to do so while misleading gamers by selling them under the exact same product name, well, AMD, in typical AMD fashion, they decided that they too would screw up. For context, the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti series was officially announced on April 15th, 2025, roughly two months before AMD was set to release their Radeon RX 9060 XT series. Not a lot of time admittedly, but also enough time to watch and learn, and realistically reverse any bad decisions to save face. The backlash Nvidia received over the 8GB 5060 Ti was more than even we expected. Gamers were not happy and Nvidia was working overtime on damage control. And having witnessed all of that, AMD still went ahead and made all of the same mistakes. All of them. Not only did they release an 8GB GPU for $300 US, but it shared the exact same name as the 16GB model, both were called the 9060 XT, and on top of that, they didn't even sample the 8GB cards. By default, all reviewers were sent the 16GB versions, despite AMD claiming that reviewers would be sent the 8GB model upon request. We of course requested an 8GB sample and did actually get one via ASUS, but almost every other reviewer who requested an 8GB sample was told they would get one, only to not get one. They sent Linus Tech Tips, for example, a Radeon RX 7700 XT. Whoopsie, I guess. Honest mistake. <laughs> Very strange. The only positive for AMD's 8GB abomination was the fact that when compared to Nvidia's, it was cheaper and it did support all 16 PCI Express lanes, but still this was yet another tone-deaf move from the red team. Like the 8GB 5060 Ti, the 8GB 9060 XT should have never been a thing, and if anything AMD should have called it the 9060, so a non-XT version with half the VRAM just as they did with the previous generation where we had the RX 7600, that was an 8GB model, and then the RX 7600 XT as the 16GB model. The good news though, again, just as we saw with the 5060 Ti, is that gamers rejected the 8GB version of the 9060 XT. Large German online retailer Mindfactory, for example, reported selling over 900 Radeon RX 9060 XT GPUs by the start of July, one month after release, and of those 900 sales, just 30 
with the 8GB version. And to date, sales of the 8GB model have been very poor, so surely this has convinced AMD and NVIDIA not to do this again. Surely, right? Having said all of that, they do love to screw over the less tech-savvy users by palming off these 8GB versions to pre-built systems, as they see that as a bit of a win-win, enjoying larger margins while providing customers with something that they will need to upgrade sooner rather than later, making them a customer once again. I think the most miserable of all the GPU releases this year would have to be the GeForce RTX 5050. Now, don't get me wrong, we very much want affordable GPUs, and we are big fans of entry-level stuff, much more so than your RTX 5090s, but they do have to make sense. And at $250 US, the RTX 5050 just never made sense. For starters, NVIDIA's own and still very underwhelming RTX 5060 was on average 33% faster, but only cost 20% more, and both models featured the same limited 8GB of VRAM. Speaking of VRAM, NVIDIA also confirmed with the RTX 5050 that 8GB of VRAM is indeed the bare minimum, because if it wasn't, the 5050 would have had even less VRAM. There really was no point buying the RTX 5050, and worse still, AMD's Radeon RX 9060 XT 8GB dipped down to $250 at one point, and for several months could be had for $270 US, and that's a mere 8% premium for around 45% more performance on average. And it's a shame, really, because you could somewhat give NVIDIA a pass on the 8GB VRAM thing with this product. We still don't think any current generation discrete GPU should have been armed with just 8GB of VRAM, but if any were going to, it would be the most entry-level models. The RTX 5050 also had a unique product name. There wasn't a 16GB version selling under the same name for a small premium. But at the end of the day... NVIDIA simply cut the RTX 5050 down too much. The tiny 149mm square die featuring 2560 CUDA cores, which is 33% less than the 5060 with almost a 30% reduction to memory bandwidth. And as a result, it somehow managed to be slower than the previous generation RTX 4060 as well as the abysmal Radeon RX 7600. And the Radeon GPU often sold for $250 US more than a year prior to the release of the 5050. Now, getting away from the entry level, we had a high-end GPU that was woefully underdressed, the GeForce RTX 5080. The gap between the 5090 and 5080 was massive, and this was by design. NVIDIA had finally completed the product stack shuffle to justify their extreme flagship GPU, and I'd argue they overcorrected. The 5080 packed half as many cores, nearly half the bandwidth, and quite shockingly, half the VRAM. Now, the 32GB of VRAM stacked onto the RTX 5090 is overkill for gaming and probably won't be usable in the realistic lifespan of that product, though I could be wrong about that. But what I'm not wrong about is that the RTX 5080 doesn't have enough VRAM. Just 16 gigabytes on an 80 class GeForce GP on 2025 is criminal, and with a $1,000 US asking price no less. But what really made the RTX 5080 look silly was NVIDIA's own GeForce RTX 5070 Ti, which came at a 25% discount while being just 13% slower on average, according to our own testing, and both models featured the same 16 gigabyte VRAM capacity. Had the RTX 5080 included at least 20 gigabytes of VRAM, it would have done a much better job of justifying its existence and its asking price. But as we see it, in 2025, 16 gigabytes of VRAM really should be the minimum configuration for a discrete GPU. And the reason for this will become very clear once the next generation consoles arrive. But making the RTX 5080 even more pointless has been the real asking price. Again, the $1,000 US MSRP doesn't make sense for such an underwhelming product, but despite that, most models have remained well over MSRP. 
And this is largely due to the fact that Nvidia faces no competition at this performance tier. And the same also applies for the RTX 5090, which has spent most of its shelf life well above the MSRP. Now, I'm not going to say there shouldn't have been an RTX 5080, because of course there should have been. But what I'm saying is that what we should have got out of the RTX 5080 was at least 15% more performance with at least 20 gigabytes of VRAM for the same $1,000 US, as that would have given it a similar cost per frame to that of the 5070 Ti, and therefore justify spending the extra money. But again, without competition, this is something Nvidia felt they didn't need to do, and as a result, we got the most underwhelming RTX 80 series product to date. The worst of the releases this generation, in my opinion, were those 8GB versions of the 5060 Ti and 9060 XT. They simply should have never existed. The RTX 5060 and 5050 are poor value and weren't very competitive as a result, but had Nvidia not tried to block reviews, I think they would have been far better received by the PC Hubber community and gamers alike. AMD copying Nvidia's mistakes with the 8GB 9060 XT really does beg a belief, but they also thought moving a GPU architecture they're still selling products based on into a maintenance mode was a totally reasonable thing to do. So someone's clearly day drinking over there. Anyway, the latest generation of GPUs from AMD and Nvidia has been very mixed. There are some decent options mixed in with some garbage that we just went over. Of course, let me know what you think about this generation and I'll be sure to read all of your comments and see what you guys have to say. That's always very interesting. Um, so make sure you do that. Also, um, like and subscribe. Do make sure you do that. Helps the video a lot. And if you'd like to get more Harbour Box goodness, we have the join button or Patreon. Signing up to either one of those things will give you access to the Harbour Box Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested. If not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.